Well, welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to start now. I think it's about three after. So uh, again, welcome to uh, our loading data into the Oracle Cloud webcast. Um, I am Brian Spendlaney. I'm a product manager in the uh, database tools group. And I'm joined today with uh, Jeff Smith, which I'm sure everyone uh, knows. And uh, he is also a, a product manager in the uh, database tool group. So I would say he's the original product manager of the, one of the original product managers of the database tool group. Hello everyone. So today we're just gonna be talking to you about loading data into the Oracle Cloud and in essence how easy it is to do. Um, but before that, we're just gonna have a few overview items here. And we're gonna start with just an overview of our database cloud services and the autonomous database, nothing you haven't heard before, but just as a summary, because a lot of the stuff that we talk about today is relevant to all of our services, as well as any on-premises databases as you have. Um, much, much of the types of data loading or the methods we're going to use or show today or talk about uh, are applicable to any database or any Oracle database we have. Uh, but we will highlight some of the uh, easier things we can do with, say, the autonomous database or an Oracle Cloud database. But to start with that, you know, we have three main Oracle Cloud database services. We have our Exadata Cloud service, which uh, is, you know, the flagship Oracle Exadata database product. Uh, the cloud, we just launched um, the X8M Exadata Cloud Service in the cloud recently, and I think that's available in mostly all the data centers. It gives, you know, the, that persistent memory and all that great stuff in there. Uh, we have our bare metal database cloud service, which brings up the database on a bare metal uh, server. And then lastly, we have our virtual machine uh, database cloud service, which allows you to create a virtual machine on uh, or create a database on a virtual machine, scale it up, add storage, all sorts of great stuff like that. Um, all of these services are elastic uh, as well. Next, we'll talk, we, uh, we have our autonomous database cloud service. And again, uh, this is kind of our, our big, uh, I don't wanna say flagship, but our big name product in our cloud, you know, the autonomous database, it pretty much automates everything. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with the autonomous database, um, when you do create that, that autonomous database, it is created on top of one of our Exadatas in the cloud. Uh, it's completely automated. A lot of the things are done for you that you normally would have to do with a regular database. And combining all these tools, we do have that fully managed, fully running, uh, fully autonomous database in the cloud. So what do you get for that? Again, as I said, provisioning, you click on a button, say provision, you give it a name, you select a version, click, click, and you're done. In about three minutes, you have your autonomous database up and running. Uh, from the start, we put all the security methods into it for best practices. So out of the box, it's secure. Um, we manage it for you in essence. We'll patch it, we'll keep it running. We'll make sure everything is good with it from the back end, from the infrastructure, from the database level. Um, it will auto scale. So there's a little button you can press and say, you know what, when my database needs more power, can you auto scale it? Or when it needs more storage, can you auto scale it? Sure. And we'll auto scale it for you. And it's optimized for that particular workload that you're working in. It learns about your workload and will alter to accommodate it. So this in essence is the autonomous database. It is available in uh, all of our data centers we have. And I think last time I checked, we're at 30 something data centers across the world. Um, and recently we added uh, autonomous uh, uh, data guard to this. So now you can have your autonomous database replicated across regions. You know, you pick those regions and we'll replicate that database across for disaster recovery. And we have, you know, uh, as obviously we have a data guard for all of our database cloud services, the three that you saw beforehand, where we can replicate that database service across any region you want. So if you wanted to go Phoenix to Ashburn or, Tokyo to Frankfurt, what have you, we have, you know, you just set it up and say data guard go and we'll set up the data guard for you. This kind of brings us to our always free service. So whether you have a brand new account or you're an existing OCI or cloud infrastructure customer, you can bring up an always free service. Um, so with our autonomous database, there's a little slider you click and it says always free. And once you click that, you can bring up an always free autonomous database in your account and never pay for it because it's, as it says, always free. 
So this, uh, the database isn't huge. You can create two of them. Uh, there's about 20, as it says here, there's about 20 gigabytes each. So it's not the largest database in the world, but you can, in essence, create an autonomous database. You can use compute to set up, you know, your ORDS infrastructure for, uh, you know, REST services or APEX or what have you, or use the built-in ORDS or APEX on the autonomous database. You get some storage and you get the networking. So all this creates uh, your, uh, our always free service in the cloud. So lastly, how does the autonomous database empower developers? How do we make the autonomous database easy for developers to uptake and use? And part of that is we're gonna talk about today with how we load data because you gotta start somewhere and you gotta start with that, that data file. You know, you get that JSON file, you get that CSV file, you get that data pump file and you're told, hey, go create this application. Well, how do we do that and how do we get that into the cloud? The autonomous database is gonna add on to that and basically, allow developers not to worry about the database anymore. You know, you don't have to patch it. You don't have to worry about maintaining it or setting this up or setting that up. You just click go and it just runs and it does what it needs to do. So it's a very easy environment for developers to uptake and use and just not have to worry about and develop their applications on top of it. It's one of the great, you know, uh, services we do have that will allow people to use this database uh, or an Oracle database without having to worry about, you know, as I said before, tuning it or patching it or is, is, rack, is rack working or enabled or set up correctly is, as we said before, data guard set up, is this thing replicating? It's all set up for you. Just go ahead and develop on top of it very easy. And lastly, what are the services on top of it that we give you to help develop in it? And these are the ones they're going to be talking about today, as well as a few others. SQL Developer Web and uh, Apex. We have multiple conferences or web conferences you can watch about Apex, but it's a low code environment. And then lastly, Oracle REST data services, where we are able to uh, REST enable your data or endpoints or procedures or views or functions in the database with a quick click of the button. And we'll take a look at that uh, as well today. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Jeff and he's going to take it from there for a little bit. Thanks, Brian. That's always a fun dance. Okay. Um, I want to welcome, why is that on the screen? Stop it, whatever you're doing. Okay. I want to give a nice big welcome to Brian. This is his first public showing, I guess, as a product manager on our database tools team. Although he's been at Oracle for many, many years and he's an all things cloud and exadata expert. And I'm going to go over some of the things you can use our tools for to get data into those environments, whether they be cloud-based ones or maybe even uh, local instances of Oracle. And then I'm going to hand back over to Brian and he's going to do some cool whiz bang uh, demos. I think I said this at the beginning while we were waiting to start. If you have questions, please use the Q&A um, panel in the, in the Zoom interface. And we can try to take those as we go, but we might end up doing them all at the end. So there are a lot of database tools out there. And uh, I think we've kind of, my team's kind of cornered the market on the DB tools name, but that basically means the products you see on the screen here. And it all started way back actually in 2005 with something called Project Raptor, which uh, is, and or which was and still is a, a Java based uh, desktop tool. That's a kind of visual SQL plus for lack of better words but it's your graphical user interface and it's your integrated development environment for Oracle and PL SQL. And that enjoys somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 8 million users worldwide. And as long as you have an environment that supports the Oracle JDK, you can run SQL developer on that. So for most of our users, that's windows, but if you're on a Mac, if you're in a Linux VM, you're good to go. And then, uh, Three to four years after that, we brought in our data modeling solutions. So that's SQL Developer Data Modeler. That's primarily used not for adding data to a database, but instead, you know, building your data model, publishing that 
as a series of DDL scripts that you can then use to push into your schema so the objects are there to receive the data, so to speak. And then it's also, of course, really nice to have after the fact so you can publish the rich entity relationship diagrams and data dictionary reports so your developers know just what they're working with. In 2011, uh, we had the Apex Listener, which was rebranded as um, Oracle REST Data Services, or ORDS, and that's our web listener for the Oracle database. So it provides access to your Application Express applications, but it also provides RESTful data services um, to the database. And we also used ORDS as a launching point to make SQL Developer Web available. So not only is it hosting RESTful services, it also provides the SQL Developer Web application if you want to use that. So in Oracle Autonomous, we manage ORDs for you. We make SQL Developer Web available for you, and you can immediately start working with your autonomous database like the second it's been created. Nothing additionally to install, configure. Um, you can just stay in the browser straight from where you, you know, created your instance and you got the link to go log in. You can click another link and start loading data or playing with the sample data that's already there. So in between ORDS and SQL Developer Web, we um, introduced a command line version of SQL Developer, which we called SQL CL. Uh, I was told we couldn't call it SQL++. I fought real hard for that and I, I failed. But anyway, it's called SQL CL. And if you're wondering what the CL stands for, as for a command line. We're not super creative on the names around here. Um, but that's pretty much everything uh, you love about SQL Plus married with everything you love about SQL Developer. So we've enhanced on the base SQL plus commands, and we're gonna be showing you some of that today. So for instance, we created some commands that allow you to actually browse and peek into um, files in your Oracle object store. Uh, you can also do something like uh, spit out a, a JSON document export of a table or a query, and then immediately put that as a file into the object store and then run another command all in SQL CL um, to load that data into um, a JSON collection in the Oracle database. So all of these tools built by the same development team and a lot of the features are common between all of them. They actually share the same code. So if you see us go for a while without doing any major updates on SQL Developer in the desktop, it's probably because we're busy doing things in the mid-tier like ORDS or SQL Developer Web or we're building things in the command line. Everything we're gonna show you is with the tools that are available uh, right now. We're in the process of working on versions 20.4 of all these products and we hope to get those to you before Christmas, um, but if not, sometime between now and, and New Year's. So that's way too much talking on this slide. I better get on to the next one. SQL Developer Web was built for the cloud. So it's cloud first, but it's not cloud only technology. If you go get Oracle REST Data Services and run it in your data center or on your laptop, you can host your own SQL Developer Web and connect it to any Oracle database that you want. So it's not 100% of what SQL Developer offers in the desktop. We've only had uh, three years to work on it, you know, so it's lacking a few things, but we're adding features to it aggressively. It does offer the ability to monitor your instance, run queries, build those diagrams, and most importantly, help you get data into your database. So I'm gonna be talking about that. Uh, we also introduced a JSON interface. So if you're gonna use your Oracle database, um, to work with JSON documents. Um, then we built a really nice GUI for that that's actually gonna go live in autonomous, um, I think it's starting out today, so in the next week or so, if you're in an autonomous database, you'll see a, a JSON page that you can use to create collections and add documents and query them. And if you go use ORDS um, 20.3, that feature is available on-prem right now. On some of these slides, I'm gonna have links at the bottom. Um, so for example, if you wanna learn more about SQL Developer Web, um, go to the ORDS homepage. We have a short code for that, so oracle.com slash rest. Now some of the other slides, I don't have links. I have uh, keywords you can use to Google search. So if you see something of interest, take a screenshot and then use the text on the bottom to go find the, the white paper or book or doc page or blog post or video where we go into this in more detail. 
So in SQL Developer Web, uh, I've got three things I want to touch on quickly. First of all, it can't be overstated. It's really nice that you can just actually run any SQL or PL SQL uh, in, your, in the worksheet directly in the browser. So something as boring as uh, select set the state from dual to see what time it is to something as cool and whiz bang as running DBMS cloud scripts to create external tables over files in the object store, which you can then use to uh, populate actual tables in your instance with the insert as select or create table as select. We also have the ability to take files on your client. So just wherever your browser is running, wherever it has access to, we can pick up CSV files, we can pick up Avro files, we can pick up XML files, we can pick up any delimited file, we can also pick up JSON documents, and we can help you load those into new tables. So we'll read the contents of the table, and, or I'm sorry, of the file and help you build a table for that. Or if you have an existing table, we'll help you load that in over there. And if you want to stay pure JSON, then if you've got a collection in the database, we help you load that um, as a document just by doing one or more file uploads. So for executing scripts, um, the way this works is we have a REST enabled SQL service that ORD supports. So that allows us to post up to the mid tier one or more SQL statements or SQL plus style scripts that we want executed on the database. In this case, SQL Developer Web is just the really nice front end um, that's being used to deliver that feature. But you could take advantage of the REST enabled SQL service if you wanted to and skip the UI and just do curl commands to that to run any sort of insert scripts or um, DBMS uh, data pump. Um, jobs, or in this case, I'm showing DBMS Cloud. So DBMS Cloud is specific to autonomous, and it allows you to write things and read things in and out of files in the Oracle Object Store, which is sort of just like your bit bucket that you have in the Oracle Cloud. And the other nice thing DBMS Cloud gives you, gives you the ability to automatically and easily parse things like JSON documents, like Avro files, like CSV. So you don't have to write a bunch of custom code. Um, you just basically give us the patterns that you want to look for. So in this case, if you've got a script that someone else has written and the file is already in the object store and your credentials in the database that allows you to read those things, it's a simple matter of copy and paste in a worksheet and saying go. Um, and you could have those tables loaded um, just like that. So I'm not going to do this for every slide, but in this case on the bottom, if you want an example of this, including the code, um, if you do a Google search for that green text, you should find a post on blogs.oracle.com um, from one of the autonomous product managers showing you how to do this. Again, Brian's gonna be doing some demos at the end, but we don't have time to demo everything. Otherwise we'd be here all day. And while we would like that, you probably wouldn't. Importing local files. So this is something in SQL Developer Web um, that we've kind of copied a bit of from SQL Developer Desktop. So I've been talking about SQL Developer since 2011 since, or 2012 or so. And that entire time, the most popular topic I've ever featured is how to import data from Excel to the database. I mean, Excel has just won and continues to win um, the data storage format war especially if in the business world, you know, everyone lives and breathes out of Excel um, documents. It's probably one reason why uh, Apex is very popular in our customer base, because we make it really easy to build rich applications based around an, an Excel starting point. Of course, we want you to get that data into the database. So it's not super exciting in SQL Developer Web that we can point to an Excel file and load it into an Oracle table. And of course, it is exciting, yes, that you can do that. I don't want to downplay it too much. Um, but I think the more interesting thing that we've added are for the Avro and uh, JSON type files. So for a JSON file, we'll parse the JSON and for attributes that fit into um, a new column, we'll create that column for that attribute. Now, if there is a, a complex JSON attribute uh, that stays as a JSON type. So we'll create a column of like type clob or blob with an isJSON constraint, and then we fit the rest 
of that attributes information into that part of the table. But this is a way to go from a JSON data file to a flat relational cell table. And I think the appeal for that is, well, we know what the appeal of JSON and JavaScript is. I mean, it's totally killed SOAP and XML. And it's very common if you're looking at open source data sets and um, open API platforms around there, a lot of the data coming out is going to be JSON. And if you're anything like Brian and I, we've been working with Oracle and SQL since before half the customers I talked to were even born, which kind of makes me feel old sometimes. But, you know, we live and breathe and speak SQL. So the, when we want to play with data, the first thing we want to do is write a select star from on it. So it's, it's kind of nice. I can point to this JSON file and in a few seconds have it in as a new relational table and I can start running SQL on it. Now, if you want to keep all of the beauty of JSON, have it in an Oracle database, and still keep all of the beauty of the Oracle database features, then using our new JSON interface in SQL Developer Web, I can point to one or more files on my desktop and have them automatically loaded up into that collection. So in this case, SQL Developer Web is just using what we call the SOTA for REST APIs that allow us to manage um, JSON documents in an Oracle database. And we just put a nice UI on top of it. So this exact interface is gonna be launched in the cloud uh, in the next few weeks, and it should be available for on-prem customers shortly. Hence the scheduled for 20.4. All right, let's talk about the old big guy, SQL developer. Um, hopefully everyone's at least aware of it. It's, it's free, just like all of these other features, or they're included with your license. So you've already given us money. We're not gonna ask for more money. Uh, we make it very easy to connect to any cloud instance. So what we call DBCS or DBAS maybe, which is frequently one of those VM-based instances in the cloud, I think just about always it's going to be closed off to direct external traffic. Customers for some reason don't like it when people can come off the open internet and connect to their databases. So we've put things in our tools that allow you to do things like create SSH tunnels and build your connection over that to get into your database. And then once you're there, you can use the scripting features and the Excel imports just like you would for any other Oracle database. So obviously that's there. Um, in the autonomous world, once you have your wallet, which we use to secure end-to-end -end, uh, network traffic. Um, we have a special connection type in SQL Developer that makes it really easy to connect to your autonomous database as well. So we give you SQL Developer web in the browser, but and sometimes you, you need that big fat desktop tool to do the big heavy lifting. Um, so all of the features that you've been using there are still there and they should all still work for cloud. I'm gonna cover some of those. And then we've also built some tweaks or built some enhancements into those interfaces that take advantage of things that the Oracle Cloud gives us. So I wanna talk about that too. So data loading, all kinds of data loading features. Uh, my boss asked me for a slide deck to just cover all of the data loading things that we had, which is kind of where this talk came from. Um, and I knew there was a lot, but I kind of almost surprised myself just how much I allowed myself to forget. So we've already covered that, yes, both of these tools allow you to point to a CSV file on your desktop and load it up into a newer existing table. Uh, what the desktop version of SQL Dev adds to that is as you're browsing those files, we also let you reference objects or files in the Oracle object store. Again, that's kind of like that file sharing space in OCI that makes those files available on the network to any machine in your tenancy in the Oracle Cloud. So really big files. Let's say you've got files that we wouldn't use megabytes to describe or even gigabytes, but more like terabytes. It's not gonna be a pleasant experience to use a browser to load those up. <clears throat> excuse me, into your tables, regardless of where they're at, but especially in a cloud instance, since you're probably running the tools, um, not in the Oracle data center. Um, so what you wanna do instead is get the data as close to the database as possible. And that's the beauty of the object store. So we have a, uh, an object store 
user interface. You can go right into your browser and point to the file and upload it that way. But we also have REST APIs that you could um, use curl commands to, to get that up there. And we also have commands built into SQL CL to allow you to do that. But once that file is in the object store, it's very close to the database. And then we can do things like build scenarios that take advantage of like the DBMS cloud package um, to shove that data into a database. So that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about first. Um, and sort of continuing the theme, you know, the object store, you can put literally anything in there, including data pump exports. So if you take a data pump um, of your instance, you take those one or more dump files and you get them into object store, it's relatively trivial to then do imports on that to any um, Oracle database that you have running in the Oracle cloud. Here's a feature that I don't talk about a lot because I honestly just forget about it. Uh, we have a copy wizard and we also have this concept of dragging and dropping objects. So this is nice if you're a developer and you've got just like this ad hoc project and we're looking at thousands of rows or maybe a few million rows. Um, so when you do um, and use these features, we're using the JDBC driver and we're batching arrays of records. And so it can go relatively quick like tens of thousands of rows, um, seconds, but not super duper quick. Not like the things you would see like SQL loader approach or as fast as external tables would work when you're just reading off the object store. Um, but in terms of me being lazy and not wanting to learn any of this technology, having the GUI just say point here, point here and make it happen, that's nice. Um, but as we're showing you these things, you want to keep in mind, you know, you get a collection or a toolbox of, of things and you should pick and choose the ones that make sense for the scenario at hand. So again, think about how much data you have. Think about how frequently you're going to be doing this. If it's a one and done, maybe you're okay to just wait the two hours to do it the easy way. But if you see yourself doing this over and over and over again, you really want to get over the learning curve of using the object store to get that file up there. Because then once it's up there, you get to use it as often as you want. You only have to pay that tax once. Finally, I want to talk about migration. So SQL Developer is our official database migration platform. So when I say database migration, I'm not talking about like Oracle on AIX moving into Oracle Linux. I'm talking about like Microsoft SQL Server or IBM DB2 or Amazon Redshift and moving that into an Oracle database. So those features in SQL Developer are supported for an Oracle database anywhere, um, preferably in our cloud, but it could be on-prem or someone else's cloud. Just don't tell me about it. All right, so local files. I'm not gonna tell you anything more about this, uh, but if you Google this string, you will find the most popular blog post I've ever written. And the number two is nowhere even close. So yes, lots of people still using Excel out there. Just a tip, if you have a lot of data, Excel is a fat file because it's really just a zipped up collection of XML files. So dealing with it sucks from a code base. So that means it's going to take longer to do things with it. Um, it's always going to be faster if you save those Excel files as uh, text-based, you know, comma delimited text file CSVs. Um, or if you're in Europe, semicolon delimited text files. It also then makes it available. You could run SQL loader and external tables over it very quickly. All right, so it's very um, subtle difference in the wizard, but when you're looking at the screen for loading um, the file, there's a dropdown for source. And if you change it to object storage, SQL developer will use the credential in your database that's defined. And these credentials are just what they sound like. They tell the database how the database itself can reach out to the Oracle object store. Um, and then we can start browsing that. So you can put in um, the URI for the file and then we'll read that file and preview it for you down here, just like it would be for um, a local file. And then the wizard pretty much walks the same way it would um, as it would for a local file, except at the end, you get a whole lot more information back than you normally would. So under the covers, we're using the database's DBMS cloud package to do that work. 
And at the end of that scenario, there's a bunch of clobs that get written to tables, um, like staging tables, error logging tables, and log log tables. And what we've done in SQL Developer is given you a really nice interface for browsing and parsing those clobs. So we read the clobs and we make it show up as a table in the UI. So you can see very quickly the records that did work, the records that didn't work, um, and you can see how long it took um, and even as you're browsing the invalid records, you can actually fix them there on the fly and run the wizard again um, to get everything in if you want. So this one can be fun, actually. Uh, if you're running SQL Developer to run data pump jobs, and a lot of people don't even know SQL Developer has a data pump interface, it's under the DBA menu. So view DBA, say data pump, and then you have wizards there for both export and import. On the export, midway through, there's gonna be an option that says, hey, when this is done, do you want us to take the file and copy it up to the object store for you? And if you say yes, you'll give us um, the credentials we need to get up there. And then after that, it says, oh, hey, by the way, once we get the file up there, would you like us to go ahead and kick off an import as well? So you can run through this wizard one time, have it export the data you want out of your database, have it take those dump files, put it up into the object store, and have us also create the import job on the database running in the cloud to go do the work, if you want. You can also say, hey, um, actually I didn't, I didn't mean to come off the screen too fast. You can also say, hey, by the way, that file's already in object store, so you can use the import wizard to just read the files off the um, object store and start from there. All right, so this is probably the easiest way to copy data between databases. It really is point and click. You point to one database, you point to a second database, you tell us, hey, do you want the definitions of these objects? Like, do you want us to just create the tables with nothing in it? Or would you like also like the data? Or you can say, you know what, the objects are already there, just let me copy the data. And then there's also filters in there. You can put in like a global where clause to say, hey, I don't want any record to go in unless it's got an ID that's between one and 10,000. So we basically just add that as a predicate query to all of the SQL that we run to get the data to go across. Um, and then we just shove it up and when we're done, we give you the reports. So again, dev projects, smaller databases, um, this will work just fine. Um, very large databases, very large tables, and it could be a table of 100 rows, but it's got a thousand columns and a bunch of clubs in it. Um, that's gonna be a less pleasant exercise, and that's when you wanna look at maybe something like Data Pump to get it over. And when I say or drag and drop, so in your connection tree in SQL Developer, you can drag tables from one connection to another connection. That could be two cloud databases. That could be an in, a local database and a cloud database. It could be two locals. We don't really care. Also, it could be a SQL Server database and a cloud database. And we'll quick and dirty copy the SQL Server table up to Oracle for you and also grab its indexes and constraints. And speaking of migrations, this is like a whole two hour talk and I'm not gonna tell you it's easy. Um, we, our tools do try to make it easier. Um, and probably the most complete migration solution specifically for the Oracle Cloud is gonna be our Redshift uh, migration utility. So that'll connect to an Amazon Redshift, which is their data warehouse product and help you put it into our data warehouse product, which would be the Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse. If you wanna learn more about this, I've written some white papers. And really, if you're gonna do a migration project, I recommend you reach out to us. We have people that are dedicated to help customers be successful with migrations. And we can also suggest partners that specialize in doing this. So you can write a bit of a check and get someone else to do the hard work for you. Um, our tools do try to make it as easy as possible. We want you to be successful in the Oracle database. So there's a lot of help there available. You just have to ask for it. Specifically for Redshift, um, it's under the tools menu. It'll say cloud migration. Uh, we'll basically ask you to give us the credentials to your Redshift database, where we will then dump all of the data using the Redshift APIs to files on their S3 bucket. And then we put those over 
into the Oracle space. And then we use our brains to do things like, oh, they're using this data type that doesn't really exist in Oracle, but we know the equivalent will change that for them. Oh, they've got an illegal object name um, in Redshift. We move it over to an appropriate Oracle name. Um, so when I say migrations are never really easy, that gives you an indication as to why. Because as you're making those types of changes, that's going to float down to application changes. Um, and it might not be a huge change, but it's just, you know, you might have lots of little, little things that carry down. And also when you migrate, you don't necessarily want to do things exactly one-to-one. -one. Like you don't want to use Teradata and then use Oracle in the same way you were using Teradata. You know, you want to use the things that Oracle gives you as a platform that are superior to Teradata for maximum performance. And that, that might mean using different routines in PL SQL than you were using before. Anyway, we have a wizard for this. Uh, it makes it relatively easy, especially easy to get the data over. All right, SQL CL, maybe my favorite product outside of ORDS on our team. Uh, very small, very simple, very easy to use. It's got like a 20 meg download. You unzip it and you're good to go. No client to install, no drivers to configure. Um, if you have the connection properties for your database, we can pretty much get you there. And that can be a database in the cloud. So we support those SSH um, tunneling and connections. We also support those autonomous with the wallet connections. We give you a nicer interface than SQL Plus gives you. So we give you easy to read query output out of the box, more modern commands. And then we added a bunch of stuff on top. Um, so I've highlighted those and I don't know, is that orange or red? I guess that's the Oracle orange, whatever. Um, liquid base for automated schema change management, uh, which I'll talk about briefly and Brian might get into. Um, and then commands to make it really easy to do all these things like I've been talking about with the object store. So SQL CL, it's available um, by default in your Oracle database. It should be in your Oracle home in the bin directory. And I'm also gonna talk about how easy it is to get started in Oracle Cloud with it. Again, nothing really to install. In terms of data loading, obviously you can run all the SQL and PL SQL scripts that you would ever run. Um, we've also created a new command called load, <laughs> which does exactly what you think it does. It looks at one of those delimited files whether it's in the object store or whether it's locally on your machine. And then we shove it into a table for you very, very quickly. Um, and again, we've tried to take the complexity and the power of object store and make it much more usable and user friendly in a command line interface. So you're not dealing with a bunch of API parameters. We just got very basic commands that you run like, hey, I want to set my um, location for where I'm doing all my work right now to this bucket in the object store so I can just refer to um, files there when I go to run the load command. And then if you're working with things in the object store already, then we give you access um, via the REST APIs to go do things on there. So I can say, hey, give me the first 50 rows um, out of that file. Let me see what's in that file. Um, or let me, hey, I've got a local file here that I've just created. Let me go put that in the object store, single command. It doesn't get easier than that. Liquidbase, um, fairly new feature in SQL CL. It's an open source project that we've extended to make Liquidbase easier and more useful for Oracle customers. Um, so if you've got some existing Liquidbase change sets, you can take SQL CL and say, hey, let me do an update on the database and we'll automatically figure out the work involved to get the state of the database to match the state defined in your change set. So we figure out, oh, we need to add this column. Well, we know how to do that. We'll add the column for you. Or if your chain sets are simply SQL scripts that run things like create tables and do inserts, we'll run that for you as well. So we try to make that as easy as possible. Um, this first screenshot you see here with the Oracle Cloud on it, that's got a panel in it called Cloud Shell. So in your browser, I'm pretty sure Brian's gonna show this, but if he doesn't, um, I feel bad now for, for teasing you. Um, simple drop down in your console, you say cloud shell, you get a, uh, a Linux terminal, um, 
spin up, you're in the OCI network, you have access to everything in your tenancy, including SQL CL. It's there by default. A single command to go get your wallet for all your databases, and then you can connect and start doing things like run liquid-based change sets or pulling files in and out of object store to load into your tables. So probably even easier than using SQL Developer Web if you're familiar with the, the command interface. Oracle REST Data Services. Okay, so this is our mid-tier tech. It's what gives us things like SQL Developer Web. You know, it's, it's listening in their web server mid-tiers for HTTP requests. And it speaks the language of the web and the language of the database, and it marries those things together. And the language that the people using it are going to use is basically going to be JSON. So I can post uh, JSON documents on a request body and have words translate that into, oh, Jeff's trying to execute this stored procedure and this JSON document body has the parameters for that procedure and it's going to return, you know, whatever that RESTful service is designed to return. So there are a lot of things in words that allow us to make loading data into the database easier. One of those would be, you know, running those SQL scripts in SQL Developer Web um, via that REST-enabled SQL service. We have the REST APIs for SODA or SODA for REST. So if you're using Oracle's adjacent document store, it's really easy for us to put and post files up. Um, I'm going to show you a cool trick on something we call an auto REST enabled table. So you take a table or view in your database and you say, hey, words, give me a full CRUD set of APIs on this table. And one of those endpoints includes the ability to simply post a ton of CSV up to words and we shove that into the table for you. By the way, an autonomous ORDS is configured and running out of the box. Nothing to do. So uh, as an exercise, I'm based here um, outside of Raleigh, North Carolina, and I had a, I still have this instance running in our Ashburn data service, which is a few hundred miles, maybe a three or four hour drive, depending on the traffic. Um, and I had uh, 10 megs worth of CSV on my, um, was it, it wasn't 10 megs, it was actually more than that, I apologize. No, I had uh, 250 megabytes of CSV data on my machine or 10 million rows of CSV. And I wanted to see how quickly I could get that into my Oracle table in Autonomous. So in uh, SQL Developer, either web or the desktop, I right click on the table and I say rest enable, at which point this endpoint on the table opens up with a batch load parameter I can post to it. Those files go over into ORDS and then they get inserted into the table. So I was able to run two of those concurrently and get those 10 million rows loaded in less than 27 seconds. Um, which sounds pretty good. It's not as awesome as what SQL Loader could do on-prem, but this is zero lines of code to do it. And I'm not going to live demo, but this is as simple as that REST call looks. So I need the URL for my instance. And inside of that instance, I've got a schema alias for my database. And then I've got a table alias for my database. I use this URI parameter called batch load. And I can even tell it how many rows I want to batch at a time. In this case, I said 1,000. But in my testing, I found 5,000 to be the most um, flexible and powerful. Um, and then I posted this and it got me those 40,000 rows up in about 12 seconds. Um, so this actually looks slower than the other one, but these rows are much fatter. Like my table has a hundred columns in it, I think. So again, pretty easy. Um, and if I had more files, I, I could definitely automate this with curl commands. Again, here's what you can Google to find my step-by-step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step painfully detailed picture. I need to go faster. Brian's going to get mad at me. Uh, almost done. So again, JSON documents store in the database. The, the APIs for that are called SODA. There's a set of REST APIs for that. Um, I can simply um, take uh, a JSON file, right, with, and that JSON file could have arrays in it, and there's a flag called um, insert that says, hey, take that JSON array and actually split it up into multiple files. So I have a 
like a 100K file here and I post up and it actually turns into 70 rows in the collection. Um, or I could do a one-to-one -one example. So one file to, to one record if, if I want. That, that's relatively easy. Um, so the UI on, that takes advantage of these um, APIs is coming into the cloud um, in the next month or so. Uh, and it's available in um, words 20.3 already. Finally, RESTful Web Services. This is where you can write your own SQL, your own PL SQL, to take those HTTP requests, do whatever you want with the data, and that could include taking files, um, taking JSON documents, taking CSV, taking XML, taking whatever you want um, and putting it into your database. So these are going to be as powerful as your knowledge of SQL and PL SQL are. Um, this example down below, I show you how to take um, files, maybe they're images, and put them in as blobs to a table. And it's as simple as this. Well, it says it's 14 lines, but it's really three lines just common and to look like 14 lines of code. And you can protect all of this with OAuth 2 workflows. So, you know, as I'm saying all of this, not only is it easy, but with, it's also secured. Hey, Brian, I've left you all of 11 minutes. I think I said I was going to give you 30. Oops. That's okay. I was uh, refreshing a, a page to see if I can get a PlayStation 5 in stock, but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Good use of your time. <laughs> exactly. All right. So what we're going to do now is let's go take a look at some of this in practice. So right now I have uh, what Jeff call, uh, showed, which is a SQL developer web. So here's SQL developer web. And what we're going to do is we're going to load in some JSON files into the database. Uh, so, you know, we're going to hit this data loading tab. Now, for Jeff, I was fortunate enough to find some data for you. Um, what we did, what I found was stuff uh, based on the town of Cary where you are. Uh-oh, hopefully this isn't like arrest records. What we'll have to see because the first file I found was uh, the Cary Police Department crash incidents. Oh, now no. this is a larger <laughs> file. It's about 33 megs. So we're gonna start with this one. And all we do is drag and drop it to this area here. And as you can see, hopefully you see this little pop-up coming up here. It says upload data into new table. And so this is gonna load this data into this table. This is going to take a second or two to take a preview, but here we go. We got the preview of our data. It's going to show it in rows and we got all sorts of stuff in here. That's great. So that's my data. We're going to hit uh, next here. And this is just going to ask us to take a look at this to name the table. We'll just call it crashes. And that's great. Okay, we got our table name. Next, going to give you a preview. Here's the table it's going to create. You know, here is the, uh, the mapping. Excellent. All right. I hit finish and it's going to go off and it's going to start loading this data. Now, while that's loading, I actually found another more interesting piece of data and this is called interesting trees in Cary. I don't know if you ever knew this existed, Jeff, but we have a holly tree. Uh, we have tree peep cool. We have uh, a dead tree. We have the admin tree. I've heard about the dead tree. Have you? The famous uh, dead tree in Cary. Yeah. The instant one. tree. Uh, and the, and the, the test tree, test, test. There we go. So we, uh, this is very important data. So we'll want to probably create an application on this so you can, you know, find the location and drive there, take a look at it. So very similar. We'll hit next. We'll call this trees as the table. Uh, that's our table name next. And we'll just, again, here's my data or how it's going to load it. We'll hit finish and it's going to go ahead and it's going to load it. All right, my tree data is loaded, it's only 29 rows, that's fine. And now in the background, it's actually putting and continuing to process that crashes file. Now, while it's doing that, and we'll give it a second, we're gonna go and let's rest enable this trees demo or this trees table, because again, you may wanna create a, a mobile app on top of this uh, that uses rest services to talk and get the location of these trees for you. So we'll just go up here and we'll go into our development tree and we'll hit rest. And we're gonna create a module on top of this. So we'll go to our modules here and we will actually create a module and we'll call this, let's see, us.nc.carry as our name and then our paste, we'll use the demo, which is API, that's fine. And we'll create this table. 
right, this module. Next, we're going to create a template. And in this template, we're going to actually have our, our, our SQL statement. So we're going to call this trees. Okay, and now we're going to go and we're going to create our handler, which is going to be a get procedure. And we're going to basically say select star from trees. Excellent. That's done. We'll hit the create button. And now we actually have our rest service on that table done, ready to go. Now at any point you can actually hit the little run button here and actually see what this returns. Okay, there's what it returns. But then I can click this. It's going to copy it to the clipboard. Now I'll open up a new tab here and hit that. And then here is the rest service that I created on that all important uh, trees table with all of our information. So now you can create a mobile app on this or do whatever you want, expose it and find where all these trees are and carry next time you'd like to go around there. Now, next what we can do is we have to just keep, take a look at what's going on with our, our, our crashes table. And yep, crashes table is in, we got 26,400 rows. So let's just create a real quick rest service on that as well. So we'll go back to the rest module here and we're gonna use the same one, the same module because this is all carry information. So we'll just click this and we'll create a template called crashes. Crashes, there we go. And we'll hit create. And again, just as we did before, we'll create the SQL statement. Click star from crashes. And good, we're ready to go, done. We'll just make sure I wrote that SQL statement right. I think so, you're intimidating yep. people with your SQL there skills, Brian. I know, this is very, very intricate stuff here. Uh, we have that REST service. Again, we'll copy, paste it, put it into a thing here. And there it is. Now we have our REST service on our crashes table that we uploaded. So as you can see, very, very quickly, we can create these, uh, we could take that JSON table, that uh, data, maybe you were given to it for a project, you have to create some kind of a web application on top of it. And here it is. You're, you know, there it is, let's load it into the database, just drag, drop it, check your table, done, create a REST service on it by doing really, really tough SQL, like select star from the table, and you have a REST service created on that data. Very easy to use, very fast. All right. So what we also saw or talked about was using our object store with our DBMS cloud packages. And what we can do here is we can really quickly uh, take a look at that. And what we can start with is basically taking a look at, you know, we can actually use DBMS Cloud to look at files in our object store. So this is just basically telling me, uh, let me see what's in this particular bucket. And it's gonna hit go, it's gonna run the SQL statement. And we see we have some files in our bucket. So we have a data pump file, there's time, we'll get to that hopefully, some cards, uh, uh, some CSV files. And what we wanna do is this is right here is a big, huge table of about 56,000 rows of Magic the Gathering cards and all the sorts of information about it. So what we can do is we can actually use DBMS Cloud and create an external table on that. So here it is. Uh, the table I want is going to call MTG cards. Here is the file and object store. And then just some information about how we're going to use the CSV, very similar to what you would do loading it into the database. And then our column list. And all I have to do is hit go. And we have that table created. And uh, just to show that what it is, we can always just do a select. Uh, there's an ID column. We'll just do a select ID column from this table. And we'll see that we are now working with that external table. And this external table is, which is an object store, we see that it is 50, 55,000, sorry, 946 rows, so almost 56,000 rows. Now, we can, if we want to, we can do create table as select star from this external table, but we can also very easily, if we want, we can use DBMS cloud copy or copy data, I should say. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna really quickly just create a table here. And so here's my create my table. It's going to call MG cards copy and the same columns that you saw that we use that external table. So we're going to create this table. Okay, table created. Now we're going to run a DBMS cloud copy data. And what it's going to do, it's going to take that CSV file that we had there. Same thing right there and put it into this table. So we just hit go run. 
that's going to run. It's going to take a couple seconds to run and take all those data in there. And then when we're done, we can basically do a, oh, it's done. And we'll just do a select star copy and we'll see that we have the 50, 55,946 rows again. But that table is now local in my database. It's no longer using an external table. And if I actually refresh this, we'll be able to see we have our two tables here. Here's the external one. And then here's the one that we use to copy that data in. So that is just really quickly on using that. We have about two minutes left. So I'm going to see if I can do this very fast. And what we're going to do is we're going to play with SQL CL real quick. Um, so SQL slash no log because we're going to log in. This is we're going to use this not on a uh, an autonomous data, but just a regular database. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect into this database here real quick. All right, here's my connection string. All right, what's my password? I did a password in here. All right, so it's going to say connected. All right, we're connected. Now, what we can do is we can actually, as, as Jeff said, we can work with object store directly from our SQL connection. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our OCI profile. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set using our CS commands with SQL CL, we're going to set the object store bucket we want to work with. Okay, we got it. So just like we saw, I can just do commands now, the CS commands list objects. And that's going to actually work with that bucket. And then here are my files. Now, if we want to work with files, it's really easy to do. So we can actually go ahead and if you don't want to work with the UI, OCI put, we're going to put this file into object store. There we go. This, it's in there. We can use our SQL history, CS list, and then we see that our file has been put into there. If I want to load that data and I don't want to use the UI or any tools, let's create a table. Okay, I just created this table, three columns, and now let's just load it directly from object store into my table. We're going to set our date format, and now we're just going to run a load, load into the table US data and then our CS command to point to that particular file. We hit go, it's gonna go, and it's gonna actually load that data. 317 rows are in there. And just to check it, we'll just do a select count star on that table, and we see there's 317 rows. So we were able to just load that data directly from object store, and if we want, we're done working with that file, OCI delete, and I can just delete that file directly from object store. So, Let's just sum this up now because we are actually hitting the top of the hour. Um, so what you saw was the ability to load data multiple ways very, very easily into an Oracle database. Yes, traditionally starting a database, creating a database, working with a database, maintaining a database, patching a database, all that good stuff, setting up data guard, setting up rack has been traditionally for that DBA type role. Someone who's gonna go, you gotta call him, he, you know, he comes out of that back room, and I can say this because I'm in essence a DBA as well, uh, for our COVID applications, and that's a story for another time. But you know, we'll go and we'll set these databases up, we'll do this, we'll do this, and we'll maintain it. We gotta patch it you know, all the time and all that stuff, make sure it's running and up and running and all sorts of good stuff. And then eventually all that, once all that's done, that may take a day, it may take a week, it may take a month. Now we can hand it off to our developers. We can see with our cloud databases, our autonomous databases, we can spin these things up in three minutes, hand them over, say, here you go. Here are all the tools you can use. It's very easy to load data. Don't worry about patching. Don't worry about maintaining it. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just work with your applications and work with your data. And it's just showed multiple ways to load it using our tool SQL Developer Web, using Oracle REST Data Services, using SQL Developer uh, Client, as well as SQL CL. We can work with files, work with data, load the data very quickly, large amounts. Uh, what was it? 10, 10 million row CSV files all the way from 29 row, very important data about trees in your town that you probably want to visit later on today. So very easy to do. It's drag and drop, move the data, and then rest enable it and start using it in your projects. So Jeff, I don't know if you want to add anything to this, but it's very easy now to load data into the Oracle database where traditionally we've seen it been very difficult and not everyone, a citizen developer, a data scientist, wasn't really able to do this. You had to hand it off to someone and have them work with it. Now, pretty much anyone can do it. I don't have anything to add except we continue to build more on this and we're bringing uh, native console 
support into the Oracle Cloud infrastructure and universe to make it easy to load data um, on any instance running in the Oracle Cloud. And under the covers, it's going to be using a lot of the same code. We're just going to tie a lot of it together. So that's one of our main missions for 2021. This is our last webcast for the year. There are more, I'm sorry, we. This is Brian and I's last webcast of the year. <laughs> The Oracle team have uh, several left, so check the events calendar. Um, I know there's a, a nice one next week for Application Express uh, or Apex. If you need more information on any of the database tools discussed in today's session, oracle.com slash SQL developer or oracle.com slash rest or that Jeff Smith on Twitter or BT Spindo on Twitter. Uh, or you can just Google this stuff, and we've polluted the internet with tons of information on these things. Videos, GitHub um, examples, uh, slide decks, blog posts, you name it. Oh, I guess I should say thanks. Thanks for <laughs> yeah. hanging out with us. Yeah, thanks for everyone. Thanks for being here today. Um, I think. Uh, Marcy, you can correct this, but I think once we have this, it'll be re the recording will be posted via or someone's, everyone will get, whoever registered will get the link afterwards to where this is posted and whatnot. So you can go and watch this and show your friends over the holiday season. Um, you know how, you know, this is probably something y'all want to sit around the, the fire and watch. Oh yeah. Popcorn and some eggnog and exactly what could go wrong. Absolutely. We're going to be recording it. So, um, thank you, Jeff and Brian for such a great presentation today and we hope you all have a great day. Cheers.